I'm Florence John Duo. Welcome to Olsem 1M. In this week's program, we bring to you highlights of the 6th PNG Human Rights Film Festival. The festival aims to create awareness on different human rights issues in Papua New Guinea. As we all know, human rights are fundamental rights that each and every human being is entitled to. This year marks the sixth successful year of the staging of the PNG Human Rights Film Festival. One film that was featured during the Port Mosby leg of the film festival was the Yumiet film, which was written and directed by Dennis O'Rourke. The video was released in the 70s and it features the time when Papua New Guinea gained independence in 1975. Let's find out from the director of the PNG Human Rights Film Festival, Alicia Barampatas, about the film festival. PNG Human Rights Film Festival started in 2010, so it's our sixth year. Um, and originally it was just in Port Moresby as a celebration of Human Rights Day, which falls on the 10th of December each year. And to see how film uh, can also give us a unique perspective on human rights issues in Papua New Guinea and international films um, that also deal with issues that are impacting us here. Um, human rights are universal. They apply to all human beings, regardless of what nationality you are, how old you are, if you're abled or disabled, if you're from Bonds District or Mount Hagen or Port Moresby, we, are, we all have the same equal human rights. They can't be taken away from us. They can't be given. It's something that's inherent to all of us. When the film festival started, it was only staged in Port Moresby. However, in recent years, the festival had ventured out to four provinces within the four regions of the country. The festival will travel to Medang to Divine Word University on the 7th to the 9th of August, and then Bougainville from the 11th to the 15th, and 2nd to the 4th of September at the University of Garoka. So we're seeing people be very interested in human rights, uh, with rights comes responsibilities, but you need to understand what are your human rights so you can respect others and also um, make a positive change in yourself to try and help others to protect their human rights. The significance of using films or movies to create awareness on issues is seen to be more effective compared to other means of carrying out awareness on certain issues in PNG. Human rights issues still remain a big issue that needs other tactics to create awareness so people will be informed and also learn to respect each other's rights as individuals. That we do have the constitution of PNG and international human rights law that reminds us of what the human rights principles are. Firstly, people have right to life and security. The question is, do we observe that in country today? What is the reality of human rights today? What is the reality of right to life and right to security and freedom? We know the statistics of gender-based violence in our country, and even if they are disputed, they're still very, very high. I always say that these statistics have names, they have faces, they have lives. So, especially to our uh, development partners who come into our country, when you talk about the statistics to an audience of people from our country, you need to look around the room and understand that when you say 7 out of 10 women, have a look at your audience and understand that 7 out of 10 of those women are likely to face violence in their lives. That's the reality of it. Putting human rights and human development, as I keep saying again and again, at the centre of the equation, and especially putting the child, that uh, young innocent child that is uh, that is Papua New Guinea, but he's no longer such a child anymore, he's going to be turning 40 years old. But all the new children we continue to bring into this world must have access to all the rights and benefits that uh, every, every single child deserves. And unfortunately, we continue to fall short uh, in terms of making those services available.
Welcome back, you're watching Olsem 1M. In this segment, we show snippets of the film Yumi Yet. Yumi Yet, a film by Dennis O'Rourke, is a testament of how films can capture and preserve significant events, such as the independence of our country 40 years ago. The film provides a glimpse of the day Papua New Guinea gained independence. Enjoy snippets of Yumi Yet. It is August 1975 in Papua New Guinea, a country of ancient cultures which has in the time span of one lifetime been colonized by Germany, Britain and Australia, invaded by Japan and finally by a mandate from the United Nations and introduced to the world of the 20th century. Throughout hundreds of islands, in the towns and in thousands of villages, the people are hearing the news. Their country will become an independent nation on September the 16th, 1975, and they're getting ready. people in this country don't, oh, well, we wouldn't be able to do it. They were talking in terms of two or three decades, while I was talking in terms of a few years. The Security Council of the United Nations has unanimously recommended UN membership for Papua New Guinea. The new state of Papua New Guinea, which became independent last week, will be...
following the screening of the Yumiet film at the 6th PNG Human Rights Film Festival here in Port Mosby, a panel discussion took place. Panelists discussed the differences in Papua New Guinea's vision in 1975 and how it differs from the current vision for the country's future, together with how these have affected human rights in Papua New Guinea. The panelists add their views on the contrast that took place pre-independence and post-independence. The panelists believe that some aspects such as social indicators have dropped since independence. That film, um, it was quite nostalgic and quite emotional for me um, to see footage from um, so long ago. I was six at the time um, and I remember the excitement. Um, Tale, does anybody remember Tale? Yeah. See the plane flying across? Quite emotional, quite moving for me to see. And, uh, but compare that to the villages where it's pretty much the same today, where celebrations go on in Port Moresby, and it's all very modern, and the celebrations go on in the villages, and it's quite, quite distinct. Um, and I think that speaks to the kind of development that we've allowed to happen or not happen over the years. I grew up in that generation, and I'm now, you know, 40 years on, um, from what I've seen, the uh, social indicators have dropped considerably. The panelists said prior to independence, all Papua New Guineans were connected. But today, despite having the technology that makes communication and connectivity better, Papua New Guineans seem more disconnected. So you look back and you, and you, you contrast those things. The thing that stuck in my mind was uh, the mantra right after independence, and, and you hear Sir John Guys talk about it, Sir Michael Samara, all of them, and it was self-reliance. They, they kept telling people in the village to look after yourself, look after your, your rivers, look after your, your cocoa, look after your coffee. Many years later, I, I had the, uh, I was fortunate enough to go on a tour around the country just to listen to some of the districts and what people were saying. And there's a large disconnect between what uh, our leaders were talking about and trying to inspire the people to, um, and to what the people were talking about. Um, we've got TV, radio, uh, mobile phones, all those things today, and our people are much more disconnected than what they were back then. I mean, the plane flying over and dropping leaflets, the patrol officer uh, being able to educate villages about what government was doing and what government wanted them to do, you know, what would your contribution be? Um, there isn't that anymore. It's kind of like every man for himself today. I guess what struck, struck me out of the, out of the movie was um, the fact that it wasn't um, uh, totally unified, you know, fervor and excitement. There was in the background, in which some of the comments have been made, there was a bit of fear and, and, and some tears and concerns and people trying to make it rain and, and uh, people worried about bombs falling and, and that kind of thing. And, you know, we tend to think that perhaps Sir Michael and his, and his passion, you know, maybe he did come a little bit early. Maybe Te Abba did have, uh, you know, was right to an extent. The intention, of course, was, was there. It was, we had to get independence um, and no one could really stand up and argue against it, I guess. But being completely practical about it, I think mean, one would have said we could have waited a bit, a little bit longer, a little bit longer, you know, and I, I think would have been um, perhaps better. Nevertheless, um, you know, we're, we're proud of all those leaders. But you know, it's time to uh, it's time to build and to move on now. It's time to look at those mistakes, look at that passion, look at um, some of, some of the real qualities of leadership. I think uh, we had at the time through our culture and through some of those old leaders, and. Um, you know, I think it's time to, time to move forward. And I think um, we really need a new generation of leadership, I think, now to, to, to build on that foundation and, and to really learn from these mistakes. And I think um, the disconnect, I completely agree. And we, we repeat this over and over. And I've said it before, it's, we're so Moresby-centric. It's all about Port Moresby. The panel discussion participants further expressed that the Yumiet film showed what happened 40 years ago and they say the situation has not changed much 40 years after independence in Papua New Guinea. 
get that impression from there. It's precisely that. People in the village are like, what, what's this all about? What does it really mean to me? In many ways, it meant nothing to them. And, uh, you know, the consequence in the following years, they probably felt nothing. Nothing would have really changed. It probably, and it did get worse. That's what honestly happened. So it was a sentiment, and it was a, it was a beat our chest, and we're going to be independent. And we weren't really independent. And we, we just went in, we, we made a mess of it, really. Let's be perfectly honest, huh? Let's be honest. And so I think um, we've got to reflect, and I, I keep saying we've got to acknowledge those mistakes, and we've just got to come up with a better way of doing things, and better leadership, I think. And, and leadership that um, is genuine and practiced, you know? But anyway, I mean, Grand Chief is a... Uh, Grand Chief did the right thing, I guess, and uh, we just got to take the mantle from him and, you know, uh, keep trying. Because like we always said, we just got all the blessings. It's all in our hands. The future's in our hands. Um, first, I'd like to say that while the film was, was an amazing uh, capture of, of times back then, what it didn't capture was the negatives. And I'll leave you with one example. My uncles talked about the curfew that was imposed on the natives. So while he played in a band, he had to be home by a certain time. So it was okay to um, entertain the expatriate community. But he had to hightail it back home to Hohola. And that meant walking to Mount Hill all the way back to Hohola. And that was the reality. If he got caught, he'd be thrown in jail. So it wasn't all you know, goodness and light. And um, I think that's something that we needed to take control of. We needed to take control of our own destiny. So you understand where people like Sir Michael and uh, Sir John Guys came from because they came out of that, um, how do you say, out of that system. Huh? So um, it, I think it was time. I think it had to happen for those reasons. But it's nothing less than our moral duty to have hope. We must have hope, and more important, we have to hold out hope to those around us. If people see us without hope, it's very easy to lose hope when those you look up to lose hope. But this is a challenge to all of us. We need to have hope. Everything that we do, everything and everything that we do counts. In this week's episode, we asked the audience who attended the 6th PNG Human Rights Film Festival here in Port Mosby about their views on the film You Me Yet. Have a look at what some of them had to say. Film, it's a great film. You know, uh, the film sort of brings out the importance of who we are as, uh, as a country and uh, people in the country. But otherwise, you know, uh, the film itself, uh, when you look at it, uh, you know, there are a lot of important things within the film itself. Um, I thought it was a good film that they showed, and I think that it's important, particularly for the younger generation, such as myself, uh, who were not around during the independence, pre independence era. I think it's important for us to know um, our history and our journey from pre-independence through to post-independence, which is today. Really interesting, you know, just take us back some years. You know, some at this time, I don't think some of you were born at the time, when, when some of us were small kids, really didn't understand what it really was until today. Then we can differentiate between the, uh, the past and the present. I must admit that was the first time I've watched the film. Um, very good insight into what had happened um, before independence, during independence, and the journey we took um, 40 years back to the present time. We've seen a lot of um, contrast in what um, we see and experience um, today. 
Um, a lot of lessons we, we should learn from um, and hopefully we, the film can be um, shown to a wider audience, to, to the Papua New Guinea audience at large, so they can get to see and appreciate um, uh, the lifestyle back then and just general um, living together, working together and getting things done. See uh, the passion people had uh, in 1975 and prior to 1975 when, they, uh, when we gain independence and uh, looking 40 years uh, from that time till now, uh, I could really see that that passion that people had over time, it eventually degraded or people already lose the interest in uh, independence itself, meaning that people mostly in the urban centers and cities, they do uh, uh, benefit something but mostly in our rural areas, uh, people feel that they have been neglected or they have been forgotten. So that is where you can see a very big difference or the gap, that there's a wider gap. It's such a special film and I really encourage everyone um, to really use this opportunity in 2015 for the uh, 40th independence anniversary to really reflect on how far this country has gone um, it really reminds us of the excitement and the significance um, and importance of being an independent country. And it, the first time I watched it, I was quite emotional <laughs> um, because it really strikes a strong chord in you. And I hope that more people can see the film You Me Yet and also um, start preserving their own stories through film. Um, so. We hope that the film festival will be able to go to even more locations in the future. And we hope that the viewers of All Sim Wanam um, will be able to get a little bit of taste of what the film festival is. So next year you can be more involved or come along as well. We've come to the end of this episode of All Sim Wanam. We will be back same time next week. If you have any comments or stories you would like to share, please contact us via the address showing on your screen or visit our Facebook page. For now, enjoy the rest of your viewing on your number one station, MTV.